Hey everybody, it's me, Mark of Manlock Sings, and today we're going to talk about Polaroid Originals film and Fuji Instax film. What are the differences and where do we use which film and what do we have actually to choose from? Let's start which formats we have to choose from. On the Polaroid original side we got 600, S670 and iType, which are actually from the frame size the same. Only the S670 has a different ISO than the 600 and the iType. The iType is actually just a 600 film without a battery. Uh, a second format and that's the Spectra. Spectra is a little bit wider than the Polaroid originals, um, but it's the same chemistry in the film. On the Fuji side we got Fuji Mini, Fuji Square and Fuji Wide. These are all Instax films, they come uh, at a cheap price um, but with a not so good look. I only have a color film lying here, but both of these companies also produce a black and white version of the film. Polar Originals also produces some monochromic films that have a cyanotype look or a reddish look or yellow. Or they just produce a few different versions of the film. They look cool, you can do some really cool effects with it. Fuji only has the black and white and color versions available. When it comes to framing, Fuji and Polaroid also have a few different films that have different frames. There's colored frames, there's golden frames for Christmas, for example, with the Polaroid Originals film. But with Instax, I, there's just, I think, Hello Kitty frames or stuff like that, but I haven't seen a golden frame or something like that. Let's continue to developing times. That's also a really important feature of both films and they vary a lot. The Instax film develops in about two minutes and it's finally developed. It just like it takes a little bit longer to get that super darken, like it darkens afterwards a little bit for I think five minutes and then it's completely done. With the Polaroid original films it's a little bit different. They take longer, especially color film. The color film takes about 10 minutes to develop and the black and white takes about two, three, four, four, three to four minutes maybe to be developed and to, so you see your result. With Polar Originals you have a little bit longer development times than with the Fuji film. Let's talk about the colors of these two films. The colors of these films are different. The Fuji has a little bit colder look and it's really clean. It has kind of this passport look to it. And the Polar Originals film is warmer. It has these nice tones, it has this vintage look and it just catches my eye a little bit more in my opinion. When it comes to the size of the film, Polaroid Originals wins directly. Instax Mini, compared to Polaroid Originals film, is just like really, really small. So if I compare these two films, you can see the size difference. And let's take a look at the square one. This is also really not that big. The only picture coming a little bit closer to it is the wide. The wide is a little bit bigger and it kind of matches up with the Polaroid Originals film. The point goes to Polaroid Originals since they have a bigger image in my opinion. And that's really essential since it's not negative and scaling up uh, you need a little bit of quality when you scan it and want to print it. But that size also comes with a price tag. Polo Originals film is the cheapest version is the iType film. The iType film is the one without the battery and it's about 16 euros at the moment. So there's eight frames in one pack of film that brings you down to a price of two euros per frame. On Fuji film we're a little bit cheaper. Um, the price range is pretty much the same for all the formats, they just vary a little bit. All these packs uh, contain 10 images, not 8 like Polo Originals, and these 10 images sell around 10 euros, a little bit cheaper maybe if you buy it on Amazon or somewhere. So you're around 1 euro for one image at Instax. If you buy Instax Mini you're around 85 cents I guess. So price wise Instax wins. It's a little bit cheaper, it's easier in handling. But one important thing is, if you want to go creative with these films, you're stuck with Fuji Instax. Fuji Instax only allows you a few creative techniques, but none that actually um, manipulate the picture itself. The only thing you can do is cut the images or do anything like to the images, like manipulating the image itself. But I haven't found any creative technique to get into this emulsion layer or what it is in, inside of this chemistry, this magic thing of Fuji. With Polar Originals there are really interesting techniques. There's the technique of lift, which I showed you in a video before and it will be linked up there. And there's a technique that's called transparency. Both of these techniques are really creative and you can enjoy it and have a lot of different results with it. They're super creative and in my opinion um, that's what really makes Polaroid Original, like the Polaroid film, win against the Fuji film. Because you can do so much more with this film in, in with manipulation than with Fuji. With Fuji you're just stuck with the image as it is here. Or I will show some other techniques that I will will work for both actually. So 
Power Originals has a little bit more versions to work with. Let's talk about archiving. Well, I don't know how they behave, both of them. Polaroid Originals is form known as impossible. They have a way up of development. If I look at my f uh, pictures I bought from Impossible and take a look at them now, uh, the black and white film they produced at the early beginning, that's complete waste. All of these images are waste now. So that's not the best thing, but the new films are way more stable and they, they made a big step up, which is also good for future because I know Polaroid Original is still developing with their films. With Fuji, I can't tell. I think they're just like there and they just produce the film and that's it. So no future development for Fuji, I guess. Polaroid Originals will always develop and try to get better with their film, get faster development times. So we can look forward to that. That's also a little bit of a downside then, because they have different versions of the film and if you get a new version, maybe that looks different and you are stuck if you have a project which you want to have in a continuous look, you're kind of stuck because the film suddenly changes. That could be a little bit... Keep that in mind if you're planning a long-term project that should look all the same. You should maybe buy the film at once and stock it up. So what are the motives I would actually shoot with both of these films? Well, both of these films are really good for colorful motives. Everything that's popping color and every stuff like that really makes these films work, especially with the Fuji. The Fuji has a popping color to it, and if you shoot just reddish color like here, as you can see, the red really pops out and everything, uh, or just blues, like massive colors, this film works great. Also for just portraits or snapshots, the film works also pretty good. For Polaroid Originals, it's also like poppier the colors, the better the film works, but it also has like a softer tone to it, which works amazingly. Um, if you can take a look at this macro image that's shot on Spectra, I mean, that's old film, but still um, it's a really soft image and it looks kind of really cool. I like this spider. Okay, so these are the two films. They both have their downs, they both have their ups, but at the end, it's just a choice of personal taste and money. And what's your, your main focus? If you just shoot a few portraits of your friends and just want to have a lot of images come out of your project, I would go with Instax because price-wise it's lower. If you want to have something with a little bit more charm and feeling to it, Polaroid Originals is the right way to go. Also, if you want to be more creative, I would go with Polaroid Originals. Yes, the price tag is heavy, punch is pretty hard if you want to shoot a lot of films, uh, a lot of photos. Well, it looks better in my opinion. Fuji Instax is, is nice, but also a little bit small to show it off. So yeah, that's, that's Polaroid Originals, that's Fuji Instax. We have both of these to choose from. I think that's a little bit of an overview about, about these films. You should be able to choose from these both. So the next episode will be about a creative technique that works with both of these. It's just easy to do and have to be thinking about a bit, a little bit uh, while you do the, your shootings. But afterwards it's fun and we'll show you hands on how it works. Good, that's it for today. Um, that was Polar Originals against Fuji Instax. Both of them work pretty good. Both of them are amazing films and I hope you start shooting instant film and choose one of these two films. It doesn't matter for me which one you choose. Just get it, shoot, and enjoy Polaroid and Fuji film. So, so if you liked the video, hit like down there. If you want to see more content, go, go and subscribe to my channel. And if you have any questions, just drop them in the comments below and I will be happy to answer them. Some more information about my 4x5 project. So my 4x5 project is about shooting Polaroid Originals film in, and for, in a 4x5 camera. There's a few options that you could be able to do it now, but there's nothing you can buy or print yourself. I'm really getting step by step forward and I'm already producing my first prototype this week. So maybe by the end of the year I can show off my little prototype and some results I took with it. Okay, so that's it for today. If you have any more questions, just drop them below and I hope to see you next time. Bye!